Hello everyone, I was recently invited by China Daily and the local government to visit Ningbo. I have never been to Ningbo, so I was excited to visit the city and to travel again. I haven't been out of Beijing in about a year. The trip was four days long and I saw a lot of interesting sights that I will share with you now. Like I said, I hadn't traveled in about a year and I hadn't flown out of the new Dashing airport yet. So when I found out my flight was leaving from there, I was really excited. The Dashing airport is really amazing. It is currently the largest airport in the world and is state of the art. Everything is clean and new, which makes it fun and exciting to visit. Of course, my trip wasn't about the airport, but it was fun to fly out of and see the new airport. The flight from Beijing to Ningbo is about two and a half hours, which isn't bad at all. The flight went fine and I arrived in Ningbo around 10 a.m. That means we had a whole day ahead of us to visit Ningbo. If you have ever been on a press trip with a major news outlet in China, you might not understand what I mean by a whole day ahead of us. Let me explain. I have been on a few of these trips before and they are packed with sights, speeches, and food. This one was no different. On the first day, we went to a village in Ninghai where we learned about the local efforts to reduce poverty. If you know anything about China, it is probably their push to reduce poverty, and every village, township, and city has tried something. This village was using art to attract tourists and offering homestays. According to our local guide, this was working well and a few well-known artists and professors had helped with the initial start of the program. They had also used social media to attract tourists. These posts on TikTok seemed to be working and the program was a success according to them. It is always hard to say if the programs are working because we were only there for a few hours. After the visit to the village, we went to a really interesting museum and hotel where we spent the night. The museum was a private museum owned by an artist named Huang Sai Lang. Mr. Huang is an amazing woodcarver and has made a lot of money selling his work throughout Asia and especially Japan. The museum was really fascinating, but we arrived around 9 p.m. and everyone was too tired to really enjoy it. That night we stayed at the Japanese-inspired hotel, which I really enjoyed because I love Japan. I had a hot bath in the wooden tub and went to bed. The next day we went to the University of Nottingham in Ningbo, China, or UNNC. We had a tour of the university and some speeches about the history of the university in Ningbo. We asked some questions and had a lunch at a cafe on campus. It was interesting to learn more about the university, but overall a little boring. This is always how these trips go, some good and some boring parts. After the visit to the university, we went to an innovation hub, which was trying to help startups in Ningbo. There were more speeches and an interesting segment about foreigners living in Ningbo. We had a fancy dinner at the innovation hub and moved on to the Ningbo Bund in bar area. The bar area was dead because it was 7 p.m., but the Bund area was interesting to walk along. The city has invested in lights to illuminate the skyscrapers along the waterfront, which creates a beautiful walking area. On the third day, we went to Kaisi to learn about the kelms and pottery that used to be made there. It was really interesting to learn about the secret formula used to create a special pottery glaze. This type of glaze was only used for the royal family. After seeing how the pottery was made, we went to a private concert by a world-famous orchestra that plays traditional Chinese music on pottery. This might have been the best part of the trip because I have never seen anything like it before and it was amazing to see and listen to them play. After that, we went to a bookstore to meet a man that has been working hard to help young people read more books. He is passionate about literature and hosts a popular podcast about reading. 
On the last day of our trip, we went to an exhibition about the area of Ningbo and learned more about the history. The center was interesting, but we were all tired from the trip because we had been doing so much already. After this exhibition, we went to the famous Wong Street. This is a walking street that has many shops and restaurants. We made sesame balls and took more pictures. After walking around for a little bit and having lunch, it was time to head back to Beijing. These types of trips can be hit or miss, but I really enjoyed my time in Ningbo. I never visited the city before and I really enjoyed seeing all the sights. It was far more international than I was expecting. The reason for many foreigners living in Ningbo is because the city has a major port that exports goods all over the world. Many foreigners work in international trade and it was interesting to hear some of their stories. I would love to visit again in the future and have more time to really explore the city and surrounding areas. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Bye bye.